getting the most out of your Wi-Fi network, today on Live Now. Hello and welcome to Live Now, the info show for technology and trends. My name is Ben Friedman and today we're very lucky to be joined by UC Kiviemi from Ekahau. UC, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey Ben, how's it going? Good Guys, to see you again. Going well, it's good to see you. We are here again at the uh, Wireless Networks Wireless LAN Professionals Conference. 2019 in uh, Phoenix, and you see, you are a rock star here. Everyone knows your name. Everyone always waits uh, for your talk. Why? Why is that? I don't know what you're talking about, but but, <laughs> but sure, I'll, I'll take it all in. I, I think you were supposed to have somebody else here. <laughs> but and anyway, uh, you're too modest, sir. Um, you're with Ekahau. Tell me a little bit about Ekahau. What Ekahau does, and what you do for Wi-Fi. Sure, sure. Uh, so our mission is really uh, to, uh, you know, take out bad Wi-Fi. Uh, whereas, you know, in your home, uh, typically Wi-Fi works really well because there's, you know, one or two routers and, and, and a couple of devices. You obviously haven't met my daughters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's a different story, <laughs> right? But but that's that's exactly the point. So the more usage in the network, the more devices, that kind of stuff, uh, the more difficult Wi-Fi gets. And and we don't really deal with home users that much, but but we deal with enterprises and large companies like, you know, hospitals hospitals, uh, hotels, stuff like that, airports. Ever been to an airport where the Wi-Fi just isn't very good? Yeah, e pretty e much all the time. Ever been to a hotel where Wi-Fi tends to fail under pressure, let's say, you know, in a big conference room, right. you, you know, it just starts crumbling down. So we make tools uh, for the guys that design and improve and troubleshoot Wi-Fi networks. So would an enterprise company necessarily deal with you directly or where would they get involved with Ekahau? That's a good question. So anyone who has a big network, it goes, uh, you, you know, one of two ways or a, or a combination. Either you have a systems integrator or managed services provider kind of build your network network for you, which is, for example, in big hotels like this, that's the case. Somebody else comes and builds the Wi-Fi network, they maintain the Wi-Fi network as a service. And they are our, uh, today they're, they are our biggest customer group. But also a very significant customer group is uh, network owners, uh, people who run the network, the IT department or the network, uh, IT slash network department of, of a hospital of a hotel, um, you know, whatever, whatever the big facility, uh, airports, uh, like Jim Palmer from Denver Airport, he runs their Wi-Fi, they use our stuff. Um, this hotel chain, unnamed hotel chain, mm -hmm. uses our stuff to do, do their Wi-Fi, as does the other big hotel chain and, and, and that kind of stuff. So. so for smaller businesses, maybe they would hire a systems integrator or a VAR to come in, uh, bid on a Wi-Fi network for their business, and that systems integrator would be a customer of Ekahau, and they would use your tools to plan and properly deploy the Wi-Fi network. Absolutely, absolutely. So how do you make the Wi-Fi network better? What what do your tools do? They make it, first of all, visual, because Wi-Fi is pretty much invisible, right? You, you plug in the router and then, or the Wi-Fi access point, and then it kind of just runs and you, and you don't know what's going on. So we try to visualize things like coverage of the, of the, uh, of the network, capacity of the network, uh, interference in the Wi-Fi network, like, uh, you, you know, let's say you turn on a baby monitor at your home, it can destroy the Wi-Fi network. Your microwave oven may destroy the Wi-Fi network. Your Bluetooth headset may impact your Wi-Fi quality, that kind of stuff. So we make all of that visual and we make uh, both manual and automated uh, systems that tell you, you know, you should do this to, uh, to make your Wi-Fi better or this is, you know, given uh, your building floor plans and, and the architectural drawings, this is where, where you should place all your, you know, 200 access points and this is how you should configure them, that kind of stuff. So you'll, 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 you have maps and deployment areas and you can put in the walls and the glass and, you know, different floors, figure out where you need to put the Wi-Fi to get the best use out of it. Absolutely, absolutely. A question I am I'm wondering then is with so many Wi-Fi vendors now and big players, yeah. you know, like Cisco uh, and Aruba, these large players in the Wi-Fi space, do they like you? Do they work well with you? Do they want to have Ekahau brought in or would they rather keep things all in-house and they feel like maybe they know better how to deploy Wi-Fi? Um, it's instrumental for our success and the success of the industry that we play together with Cisco, Aruba, and, and everybody. And um, 
and it's it's very much and this is not just a marketing tagline this is actually reality and you can ask from anybody at cisco or aruba and you've seen it here at the conference too so so for example you get say cisco um they own like 50 percent of the wi-fi infrastructure market when it comes to enterprise and uh, then they you have aruba like 20 percent and then then it's like ruckus stuff like that all of those guys uh when it comes to like building large-scale networks all every single one uh of the mentioned companies standardize on our tools when it comes to designing wi-fi and travel shooting Wi-Fi. They had their some of their own lightweight uh, solutions for doing some of that, but, but when it comes to doing serious work, when it comes to, you know, making sure the Wi-Fi works, designing it well, they use our stuff. And it's no secret, they, they publicly say that. And of course, not every deployment is just with a single vendor. Yep. Many deployments are either, you know, a part of an old vendor, some of a new vendor, or different vendors for different specialities, different topics. Does your, does that is that one of your selling features is the fact that you can be vendor neutral? We are very, very much vendor neutral. And But if you look at the single building, uh, if it's from a single owner, let's say an airport or a hotel, it's usually a single vendor. They might switch the vendors between three to five years when the refresh cycle is up. But if there's, you know, dissatisfaction or if you get a better deal from somewhere else, whatever the reason. But we definitely, you know, support all, all the vendors. And it's, it is one of the key selling points. And it's maybe that's because, you, you know, why we are so tightly knit in this uh, Wi-Fi industry as well is that we work with everybody. So, so you, you know, one one example is when I fly from Finland to Silicon Valley. Uh, it's no secret I go to Cisco, and the next day I'm, I spend at Aruba, and then the next day I'm at Ruckus. Because you know, you know, uh, we we all have similar interests, and and uh, I'm not giving away anybody's trade secrets. I just want all of those companies to do as good good a Wi-Fi as possible. Of course, I see you brought uh, a uh, a little tool with you today. This is one of your tools. This kind of reminds me of the uh, old uh, Discman uh, thing. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it what, is. What, what is this and how would you want somebody to use it? Well, um, I actually um, have an 80s CD in here if, if you'd like to take a listen. <laughs> how <laughs> did you know I love 80s music? Because yeah, <laughs> you played it, you know, all night for us. Thank you for that, by the way. Of so, course, yes. Just side note, uh, yesterday we hosted a uh, party uh, here, here at the show and Ben and his buddies were nice enough to uh, to play uh, the entire evening, like That's 80s, right. 90s music. In us. another life. <laughs> very, very nicely done, man. Thank you, Loved sir. it. Especially Billy Idol. Ah, love Billy Idol. Yeah, man. So, uh, what is this? This is a Wi-Fi, like precision Wi-Fi measurement device. So, we are like, uh, our DNA is a software company, so we do stuff for like PCs and iPads and, and all that. So, However, there are Wi-Fi radios in here. Yes, absolutely. So, this just hooks up to our software and measures everything about Wi-Fi when it comes to, you know, that interference coverage, uh, performance, you just plug this, one of these guys in, in your iPad and then you, you completely understand. Oh, it works with iPads? Guy. Works with iPads, works with Mac OS and works with PCs. Fantastic. So this is something that someone who is going to or had been hired to, you know, figure out how to deploy the Wi-Fi in the best way, they would take this into the venue, the facility, the building, walk around with it, and it would record that data. Absolutely. Have you ever considered working for our marketing? Because you, 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 you <laughs> describe this much better than I do. So, no, that's a, that's a great offer. Maybe, uh, you know, after the podcast, we can talk about yes, that. Yes, absolutely. Uh, but then maybe I'd have to move to Finland to do that. So I have nothing against that, man. I, uh, that's, that's one thing I wanted to ask you about. So technically your company is, is you know, HQ'd in the US, but really, yeah the central development area and sales and all that sort of stuff, that all happens in Finland. And I'm curious as to what sort of cultural challenges or you know, interesting you know, points that you've seen dealing with the Finnish culture while selling into a highly USA-centric sales market. That's a really good question. And uh, while the, you could say, uh, I'm biased, but um, I would say the epicenter of the company, like culture-wise and development-wise, is in Finland. Our sales office, so, so the US office is actually our sales office. So we have, uh, I don't know, dozens of people uh, working for sales that are American working at our American office. Sure. So, so those guys uh, distribute there, but, but you know. Are there cultural differences between the Finland office and, I mean, I'm sure you guys get along, but there must be some interesting cultural differences there. There is cultural differences, and I think culture comes down to like whoever is is kind of the heading that office. The leadership of that office builds the culture, right? So, but 
but to me, it's okay. There's there's slight differences between Finnish and American culture, but I think it's more like I see, I, I see for example, American companies uh, that that are more similar to our Helsinki office than our American office. So so it depends more on the leadership of the office than about you, you know the um, the geographical. But if you look at differences, your question is probably about differences between uh, Finnish culture and American culture. Sure. I think it comes down to like we've thought about this long and hard uh, on like um, and we have endless discussions about this. But I think one of the key key things is uh, Finnish people feel more safe at work because we have the social security safety net. If you get the boot, uh, first of all, it's very hard to fire people. And even if you get fired or get unemployed, uh, you, you, you know, you're still safe. We still you know, and, and the universities are free and educa all education is free and healthcare is free. And we give you money if you get unemployed and, and Maybe stuff I do like want that. To move to Finland. Yeah, 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 man. And just just start <laughs> chilling out. So, so that uh, that in combination with uh, with like if things are done right on the cultural level in the co in the office leads into people feel, feeling very safe at work. They are okay to make mistakes. Uh, they are okay to laugh about things. I'm sure you've seen how we use humor as one of our like advantages. The only way to, to be able to, to use that humor is that people feel very safe in their environment. It's okay if they screw up uh, beep in their uh, insert, you know, beep somewhere. Right, in, we have there, somewhat but, of a politically correct culture here where maybe people aren't don't feel free to use humor. They're worried about treading on toes or yeah, yeah or, or even getting fired um uh, but but that in finland it's just you know uh, people don't really get fired because of that kind of stuff and right. even if they do they're safe so so that's i think that's one of the key key drivers is um it also comes down to like uh, software development for example those guys can freely innovate they can freely try new things different things in their work and they will not get punished for it they get rewarded for failing and learning about it and and we share share the failures every week uh you, you know what we learned how we failed how we won you know this kind of stuff so you see, I feel like we've covered a lot of ground here today. If somebody wants to learn more about Ekahau, what you guys do, the products you have, what's the best place for them to go? Um, our website, obviously, and Twitter. So um, the company is spelled E-K-A-H-A-U. I, I think it's here, right? Uh, okay. I wonder if you can see that, but E K A H A U. Yeah. Exactly. So so just go there, Ekahau.com uh, or Twitter. Uh, you know, Google my first name Wi-Fi and and you'll find my Twitter LinkedIn whatever so just reach out give me a call uh, reach out on Twitter I'd love to talk I'm passionate about this stuff you see thank you so much for joining us today it's been great having you on thanks so much Ben uh, thanks for having me here and thanks for you know the awesome uh, performance last night you're very very welcome that is all the time we have for today uh, but if you like the video please subscribe uh, leave us a like we'll have a lot more coming from the wireless land professionals conference and we'll see you next time on Live Now.